So this shows the appliance placement design. So again, this is significantly um, thicker than the original designs were because again, it was discovered that we need more strength of the appliance uh, in order to maintain the symmetry of expansion. So this, this is the entire FME placed. You can see there is a gap here. And in this case, this is a symmetrical case. So you see that this gap is even, essentially even from the right side to the left side. But if there were a slant of the entire pallet, say the entire pallet were slanted this way, then you would see that this would be longer here and shorter here if this were placed horizontal to the face. That gap that exists between the expander and the pallet, couldn't that itself be problematic in some ways? So the further away the, the screw force is from the anchorage, which is the bone, yes, it, it, the more problematic it is uh, from a mechanical standpoint, meaning that you're going to put more stress on the tads in the system. And it's a simple, you know, it's a simple lever mechanics, right? If you use a, a pry bar, you can put a lot more force down there than if you're trying to, you know, to, to hold the, the thing up from the middle or whatever. And so same idea applies. The closer this screw is to the anchorage, which is where the bone is, the more force you're going to be able to apply to the jaw without things breaking, bending, or having problems. And so certainly that's a shortcoming. So the idea behind FME is, well, let's make this as bulky as we need to, to accomplish the goals that we have with asymmetrical expansion, but also be able to have it be sustainable without breaking and, and fracturing and having complications. So those gaps are intentional then? Those gaps are intentional, that's correct. Additionally, it does create a space where the patient can clean under, um, or you can think about it the other way, it can create a space that's hard to clean under. Uh, and so, yes, they are intentional though, it's designed that way. And you know, time will tell if we can get this uh, dialed, or if they can get this dialed in enough. And, and I say we because, I mean, any company that's willing to, to put this much time and effort into helping make our lives easier and help get better results for our patients, um, you know, that's a company that I wanna stand behind. Totally. What, what other visuals can we look at uh, to understand the FME design better? So here's some additional landmarks you can see here. This is the nasal cavity and the bone. So they're looking at the different areas of thickness of bone that we have here. Again, there's our cortex here and our cortex here. This little blue outline is the soft tissue. So you can see where that is. That's gonna become important when they design the guide. Uh, and this also shows uh, at the different depths where, where these tads are placed and what that looks like from a right to left standpoint. This is looking up at the jaw. So you can see here where the skeletal suture is versus the, um, the, the bony suture versus the facial midline. So you can see here that it's not lined up exactly where the palate suture would be. Yes, it's between the palatal suture, which is in the middle here, but it's actually aligned to the skeletal landmarks, which is these crosshairs that you can see here. Hmm. And then they also will give you the different lengths of tads that you need to. So anything in range from you know, 11 and a half, and I, I think they go all the way up into the 20 millimeters as far as the tads that you can have and then the number of the tads this is gonna help you line everything up when you're actually delivering the FME to be able to make sure that you know, the right tads go in the right places. Those are all color-coded as well.